Hallo, ich bin Simon von den Dogspotten. Ich bin hier mit Fernanda Pessau. Pessoa. I'm sorry. Okay. And nice to meet you. Um, nice to meet you. Uh, you did the film Arid Zone, which is about um, you going to America when you were 15 yeah. and then coming back 15 years later. Yeah. So what were your intentions with making the film? Were you trying to make it political or was it to close a chapter of your past? I think it was both. Uh, I decided to go back to Arizona, to the city that was considered the most conservative city of uh, the United States, Mesa, where I lived. Uh, I decided to go to make a film that I thought was going to be much more political. And then I got there and I think it got really personal to me. And then I was editing for three years because I really had to understand what was my role in it. Yeah. And so I, I, I realized in the middle of the process of editing that it was about myself as much as it was about the political situation that we're living in right now. You talked about learning English through American high school films. Yeah. A few of them were used as background sounds yes, in the school scenes. Exactly. Why did you choose to film an empty school? Was it a metaphor or...? Yeah, I thought uh, the empty schools, they gave kind of a strangeness to things that we have seen a lot of times. Yeah. I'm sure that you guys also watch a lot of like American series right now, like American high school mm. series. Like they have a lot of like 13 Reasons Why, all of that. So. We are very familiar with like the high, American high school ambiance, like scenery. Mm. And I really wanted to give it a, like a strange element so that we would look at it in a different way. Like we wouldn't just recognize this place, but we would be like, okay, there's something odd about this. So we use not only the backgrounds from high school films from the 99s and 2000s, but also the background that we filmed of the actual high schoolers that were going to the school. So with you, many students came to America for an exchange year in 2001. Do you know how they experienced their year? Was it similar to your experience? I was actually, when I was there, I was the only Latin uh, person that they had in my school. So they, have a lot, they had a lot of people from Europe. They had uh, a girl from Amsterdam, a girl from Germany, who was actually at the screening mm. yesterday, which is amazing. We hadn't seen each other in 18 years, and she was at the screening. Uh, they had people from Sweden, but I was the only one from Latin America. Mm. And I think that's very different. I think my perception as a Latin American woman is very different from their perception as Europeans. In some interviews in the film, the answers were completely against my um, beliefs. Uh, I think I wouldn't be able to hold back my temper in that moment. <laughs> um, for example, when they talked about the borders, uh, yeah. the border or the Mexican, the Mexican problem, um, were there situations where you just wanted to say th something against what was said? I always had in the back of my mind that I didn't want the tone of the interviews to be confrontational. I really wanted to try to talk to them and really like try to understand what they were telling me. So even if I disagreed with most of the things they were saying, I just tried to like keep having a conversation and like trying to dig that deeper to try to see what was behind what they were saying. So when they were saying those things about, oh, but you know, the uh, Mexicans, they do a great job with the waterfall. It's like, okay, but and why do you think that is? Why do they do jobs that are less paid? You know, like trying to make like really simple questions that they had never thought about actually. Yeah. Like when, you, when I ask something like very simple, like what does it mean to be an American to you? They were all like, wow, I had never thought about this. So it was just like really trying to make them think about things that they don't usually think about and me trying to understand what goes on in their head. This is a very big problem of our time, especially in Brazil also, because we, we are very divided. Like, mm. you know, people who are right wing cannot speak to the people that are mm. left wing and we cannot dialogue. And then it's weird to think how we are going to be able to change the situation. In my opinion, your film was trying not to reduce the, per, uh, the people on the, uh, their political stance. So still in the recent debates, uh, opinions are getting more polarized and more extreme. Um, so what do you thi think and feel when you hear about radical actions like in El Paso, where a right-wing shooter shot like 22 people? So while I was editing the film, they had a lot of this, like last year was, uh, I, ha I think they had, I don't know how many mass shootings they had. And they also had the Charlottesville protest, mm. right wing protest. While I was editing the film, they had a lot of this, like last year was, uh, I, ha I think they had, I don't know how many mass shootings they had. 
and they also had the Charlottesville protest, mm. right-wing protest, Trump was elected, yeah. so I think things got a little bit more extreme. And all the time, I was just thinking like, of the relevance of talking to these people, but that, I don't know that Mesa people are that extreme, they're very conservative, but I yeah. don't think they would go out like shooting people yeah, or sure. like going to uh, protest against. But so I just I, I don't know, I was like, like trying to understand this radicalization that has happened ever since. And also in Brazil, because when I went there to Mesa, Brazil was not as polarized as it is mm. right now. Right now, Brazil is insane. Like we are very, very divided. Uh, we did have some mass shootings as well in Brazil. Mm. Yes, we, we are like trying to imitate the U.S. in all things. How do you think the people in Mesa reacted to the shooting? Did they feel um, bad or um, did they connect anything to their own beliefs? What um, uh, the right-wing shooter um, maybe had in mind? I really don't know because, well, I talk about Columbine in, in my mm. film because when I was there they had the two-year commemoration of the Columbine shooting yeah. and and they were just like oh I didn't remember they had this yeah you know like they, they don't I don't know for them oh, it's okay. not something like very serious people that defend guns they always say people kill people not guns mm. and it's like yeah but if you don't have access to a gun maybe it would be harder yeah. right uh, so they're always like trying to blame uh, like mental health issues. Mm. They don't think that they have a big problem with the guns, yeah. ac gun access and gun yeah. control. So I don't know if they connect that to the reality. I think it's like very separated for them. How did your last visit to Mesa or to the USA change maybe also your view of your own country? Did you, could you connect certain things? I think Brazil is it's funny because our nationalism, what we call patriotism in Brazil, goes through trying to be more like the United States. In Brazil, people usually see the United States as the ex-colony that went right, you know, mm. like they work. Yeah. And so people a lot of times think that we should try to imitate them. But the problem is that Brazil is not and is never going to be the United States. Mm. Like we can, could never imitate what they are. And I don't even want us to because <laughs> I don't think that's the right way. So they elect someone, like the current president that we have right now in Brazil, and people think, yeah, now we're going to be like America. And then what we see is that actually what he's doing is selling everything that we have to the United States, right? Like see, he's selling our oil, all our commodities, like for a very cheap price mm. to the United States. Bolsonaro went to meet Trump. And he was like waiting for Trump for a really long time. And Trump like saw him for like 20 seconds. I don't know if this is true, but everybody's talking about this in Brazil. And then when Trump was leaving, he said, I love you to Trump. So it's like, this is, you know, like, this is it. Like, he will never be Trump. Yeah. I'm glad he's not Trump. I'm not saying we should be Trump, but I'm sure a lot of people that voted for him thought that he would be more like on the liberal American side of economics yeah. and politics. Thank you for the interview. It was Thank very nice talking me. to you.